Well, one child, it's, was his mother started on the diet three months before he was born. Three months before he was born. The child grew and he ate nothing but raw foods. He ate the raw milk for a while. I said, Mom, you're not very healthy. Put the kid, wean the kid off onto good cow's milk. Cow's been eating raw all of its life, you know. So, But she was a mother and wanted to have that connection. So finally, at nine months, took her almost a year to cut it completely, but start feeding the child raw milk. And, uh, you know, they said, well, what else can we feed the child? I said, there's nothing else for four years but raw milk. That's it. The tribes people, that's all they feed their children for five years. Some of them nurse all the way to seven years old. You know, but they're starting to eat at four years old, something else, other things. And in that third year, they may get a little taste of things here and there. But mainly, they're breastfeeding for four years. He said, ah, no, we don't trust that. I said, okay, if you want to feed them something, feed them something very concentrated and, you know, get them something like buffalo liver, blend it with half milk, a little honey, and feed that to them as a baby bottle. So they cut these huge holes in the nipples, and that's what that kid ate. And he's five years old, and that's still what he likes the most. Half buffalo liver, half milk. At two years old, not even two years old, he was under two. This is in September. His birthday is in December. So I was doing a workshop, and I stay in their home. They have a house, and the uh, the upper floor is an office and an extra bedroom. So that's where I stay when I'm there. And this child wasn't even two years old. It was September. And we're, it was after the workshop. And we were sitting around on the floor in a little forest, you know, and I'm two years old, just sitting there, just happy and calm as can be. His seven-year-old cousin is there, and she's hyperactive and, you know, irritable and everything. And, and Nicole, the mother, <clears throat> brings a new board home and puts it down between the cousin and, and Forrest, her son. And the son, uh, you know, just lets... Uh, the cousin take the board and what it is it's a board with all these cutouts of the alphabet and you've got pegs that are shape of the alphabet so the seven year old girl is trying to fit everything in she doesn't get one in seven ten minutes doing it little Forrest just sat there encouraging her you know he's not even two years old <laughs> doesn't get one in so she gets up, she throws one, and it hits, you know, throws it right at Forrest. And hits him, didn't hurt him. He took it and said, P, put it right in the slot. Put the whole alphabet in there and named everyone. Not even two years old. And, and the mother, the father and I looked at it and said, ooh, this is good. This is really good. We got a really bright child here. So um, the mother said, okay. Say the whole alphabet. So he said the whole alphabet. Now, he, he hadn't had television. He hadn't had any of that thing. He had very little exposure to other kids. He maybe heard the alphabet song once or twice in his lifetime, you know, on a kiddie show or something like that, right through without missing a beat, saying the whole song. And I said, I, I was just playing. I said, okay, sing it backwards. Without missing a beat, he sang the whole thing backwards. <laughs> So we realized what he had, what he had there. So when he went, we was going to start going to preschool at two and a half, a um, little over two and a half. So um, he started. He was in class. He automatically started picking up books and reading. Fourth grade, fourth, four-year-old material and five-year-old material to all these preschoolers who couldn't read or write. He just, he's five years old and he just entered the fourth grade. All the children who are born in this diet, who don't have, you know, something, the mother got some kind of chemical into it that damaged the child, they're all very advanced and very smart. Even one teenager, I mean, I've got lots of teenagers it's happened to, but one was out of the ordinary, extraordinary. Um... That's redundant, isn't it? Extraordinary. So, she was a girl, her mother and father going through a divorce. She was 14 and a half years old. Her mother 
uh, was going to, you know, her mother was very sick, especially going through the divorce and everything. Um, the husband was a doctor, had lots of stuff, and didn't want to give her anything, not even a, but just a small little house with the kids. So um, she was very distraught, so she had to go on this diet because she was getting chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. So she forced her daughter to go on it at the same time. And her daughter, any time her mother wasn't looking, giving me eyes like this, <laughs> letting me know that she had no part and didn't want any part in this diet. thought it was crazy, it was stupid, it would kill her, all kinds of things. So <clears throat> the mother forced her to do it all day long but one meal a day she could have with her friends. It's cool. But most of the meals all throughout the day had to all be something that I recommend, which is mainly milkshakes for her and, and meat twice a day, raw meat. <clears throat> so I went back the next year. Guess who was there on her own? The 15-and-a-half-year-old girl, bright and happy, there listening to everything I said. Because what happened was she was a B student, good student, nice person she wanted to be a professional dancer and she was an only a mediocre dancer after that year on the diet she went from a B student to the top in the class and she became the top in ballet in one year and she got a scholarship at Juilliard she knew what the diet was doing for her because whenever she needed something cooked she wouldn't have the energy or stamina or timing she would even get headaches. So, you know, it can happen. You know, it, it works quickly on some people, but most people it's a gradual thing because we're so toxic. Uh, 